Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this amazing topic. I think this is more like a, a telework a, a 1.2 or 2.0 because uh, Dr. James Gabriel is not a new person in Popholic. She has a, a future in Popholic in the past, and she's returning here with amazing news to provide us a lot of good information about her study about telework. Now, before we start, I just need to uh, keep everybody in tune with the housekeeping rule. Uh, you can be on camera if you want to, uh, but if you don't want to be on camera, that's okay. If you're driving while listening to this podcast, please drive safely, pay attention to the roads. Your safety is more important to us. Um, if you are also just joining us, please, if you're not talking, which uh, most of you guys are not going to talk until when we open it up for open discussion, uh, mute yourself so that uh, we don't have noises coming from the background. But the topic for today is uh, telework satisfaction and leadership commitment among NASA employees. Uh, Dr. Jen focused on NASA employee to do this work. This is purely scientific research. And uh, that doesn't mean that this will not apply, the telework uh, will not apply to any work environment. Yes, there are certain work environment that it may not apply. We're gonna uh, discuss some of those. Uh, however, uh, just for the sake of time, let me talk about Dr. James. Who is Dr. Gabriel James? Uh, today, we have the privilege, meaning public of welcoming Dr. Gabriel James, a remarkable individual professional who have achieved an amazing milestone in her academic research on telework, impact and effectiveness. Dr. James is an expert in organizational leadership. She earned her Doctor of Management degree in organizational leadership from the University of Phoenix. Dr. James' doctoral research focus was on the impact of leadership commitment professional development and telework satisfaction among NASA employees. Professionally, Dr. James is dedicated an intellect and a, relent and a relentless uh, in pursuing new knowledge. Dr. James is an exceptional leader with unique qualities, an inspirator and mentor to her peers and colleagues. With over 17 years of experience in leadership roles in various industries, including healthcare training, military, and banking, Dr. James is a highly regarded consultant, trainer, and project manager. Her professional experiences and areas of expertise combined have facilitated success and high quality program, programming alignment with organizational goals in a progressive learning environment. Please join me and a round of applause in welcoming Dr. Gabriel James in Popholic Live Show. Welcome Dr. James. So I will turn it over to you uh, to give us uh, a brief uh, uh, description of what you're gonna do today. And thank you again for coming back to Popholic Live Show. Well, thank you for having me. Hello everyone. And thank you, uh, Dr. Umalu for uh, the warm welcome. Um, hopefully you're able to see my screen. Um, again, my name is Gabrielle James, and I'd like to start off, um, thank you not only for joining, um, but for, you know, being able to join into this uh, discussion here today. So I will be talking to you about the impact of leadership uh, commitment, professional development, and uh, telework satisfaction among uh, NASA employees. So throughout this presentation, I'm pretty much going to walk through the different uh, elements of the research and my findings. And we'll uh, get to discuss uh, telework also through a health and social uh, perspective, All right? So if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to uh, drop those questions in the chat. All right, Dr. Umula, do, would you like to pass it back to you or would you like to head over to the survey? Uh, you, uh, you can... Uh head over to the survey, and then uh, I can proceed after that. 
Okay, sounds good. So what I'm going to do is ask those that are on the line to uh, be able to answer some questions for me. So give me a second and I'm going to um, to cast a survey for you to join slido.com. So give me one second and I will share my screen. So right now, what you're going to do is you can either um, go into the chat or I'm going to also present it on my screen. So um, so we do have a few quick questions for you all and we want to understand the audience and, you know, um, what capacity you all may uh, work in at this current moment, right? So um, over to, on the left side of the screen, you'll see a QR code. Um, and if you're on your computer, you can um, open your camera app and hover your, uh, your camera over the QR code to join this particular um, poll and weigh in. Um, if you're on your phone, you can go to slido.com. And then once, um, you know, you get to slido.com, it'll ask you like, what's the uh, participant code? You can just go ahead and type that number in. But we do want to figure out, you know, in the audience, how many people are currently teleworking? Now, some of you might say, you know what, I am 100% on site when, uh, you know, the pandemic edit ended, they brought us back in. Or you might say, you know what, pandemic, uh, even before the pandemic started, you know, I was 100% remote and during pandemic, 100% remote, or you may have um, a percentage between the two. So you may be partially remote and partially on site. So you might be more of in a hybrid. Uh, so we want to understand, um, you know, what your current working situation is. And and if you go to the chat, uh, you can actually, because it's not clickable, you can copy the link and put it on your you know, computer and then... Uh, go into the link as well if you don't want to use the QR code. Right. Did you yeah, just go to slido.com and then type in that uh, link or excuse me, type in that code. All right. So, so far it's looking like majority of the audience is working more so in a hybrid uh, setting. So I'm assuming um, either you're 100% um, or excuse me, in the office or maybe traveling and in the office or at home in the office and maybe a combination of all three. Um, all right. And if you are having any issues with Slido, just let us know and we can uh, provide support uh, with that. Uh, Dr. Umilo and I were talking earlier, you know, this is just one of the things that comes along with working in the remote environment, you know, all the, the, the platforms, right? The different right. functionalities that you almost have to interact with. Um, so it comes with this, uh, this space. So. All right, Dr. Umilo, was there something you wanted to ask the audience in terms of? No, not really. Uh... All right, so I'm gonna head over to the next question. Hopefully you had an opportunity to weigh in. Um, if not, you get um, another chance on this next question. All right, so those that are hybrid or and or 100% um, in the office. Again, we wanna understand how's that working out? How satisfied are you with your uh, telework experience? You know, you may say, you know what? I'm loving it. Um, or you may say, you know what? I'm not so much loving it. There's some, you know, room for um, growth in the, in, you know, our telework program. Or you might be in the boat where you're 100% in the office and this may not um, necessarily apply. So um, I'll give you an opportunity to weigh in there. So it seems like we have some very dissatisfied, uh, dissatisfied, and then very satisfied. All 
right, so I'm going to head over to the next question. So does your telework program provide professional development for telework technologies, right? So for virtual platforms such as, I don't know, Zoom or Microsoft Teams, um, or, you know, there might be a platform that your particular organization uses. Do they provide um, some type of either trainings? Um, I know, you know, you can do like a lunch and learn. Um, and if so, can you briefly describe, um, you know, how does that look in your organization? So I think it'll allow you to, you know, give feedback up to a certain amount of characters. So you can't write, uh, I think it'll stop you, to, but you can do multiple attempts if um, it'll allow you. Perfect. So provide trainings in, micro, in uh, teams, which is very important. I know a lot of organizations are uh, moving to Microsoft Teams, so definitely necessary. Um, okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and thank you for your feedback. We're going to go ahead and go back to our presentation. Oh, oh, there we go. We have more. Sorry about that. Yeah, so before I, I jump in into this question, uh, there's a word that we usually say, I'm from Igbo. Uh, it's a ifenyilalo, boalo, and uh, Marcus Aurelius. Uh, and we're going to come back to this, uh, says uh, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. And this uh, statement is um, uh, true in many cases. So we are, we were in intra-COVID and we are mo slowly moving out of COVID, post-COVID. There's a lot of changes that has happened in our society. And one of the changes, that big change that happened was uh, the telework program. And uh, it's not that telework is actually new because Dr. James, we discussed this in detail. You know, the federal government has already had a telework act in 2010 before even COVID happened, but it becomes an opportunity. Like I said, uh, uh, Michael already said, an impediment uh, uh, advances action. So uh, we have the opportunity to now use telework to be able to mitigate some of the problems uh, relating to work environment and uh, social distances. Uh, so that being said, Dr. James, you have done this work uh, scientifically. Uh, what I want you to start with in this discussion uh, is to tell us, uh, describe to us, what are the problems that instigated you or prompted you to do this study or conduct this study? What uh, Describe to us about the background of the study and also the purpose and significance of the study. We can start from here to start trying to gain insight of how and why you did this, uh, conducted this study. Yeah, definitely. So definitely really excited. Um, I, I was uh, in doing this research as it relates to uh, telework. So just to give you all a little bit about myself, I have worked as a government contractor for the past five years, and I've worked in a telework environment uh, since the start of the pandemic. So about uh, the past three years. Um, so here's what we already know. Um, in the federal government, many employees are currently te uh, teleworking from home and other uh, remote locations. Although telework provides uh, flexibility um, and there are uh, definitely many uh, benefits to it, we do know that there are many uh, benefits, but there are challenges that still exist within that. 
All right. So uh, the research has shown that there are, you know, those benefits and challenges um, that are related in that environment. Um, so basically, my study is to look at some of that. So the problem is that there is an adverse uh, impact of leadership commitment in telework programs um, with limited exposure uh, to professional development opportunities and uh, low, which lower, can lower uh, telework satisfaction. All right. So with that, um, I am going to provide the uh, purpose of my study, which is uh, the the purpose of the uh, quantitative descriptive study was to determine the satisfaction level of NASA employees focusing on leadership commitment, uh, communication, and professional development in a telework uh, program throughout uh, the, the United States. All right, so what I'm going to do is show you all a video. I may have to uh, go into come out of this presentation so you're actually able to hear the audio of it. Um, but I will uh, go ahead and start playing that. Hopefully you're able to hear it on your end. All right, so this is a study that I have um, pretty much uh, looked at. And so in that I analyzed telework satisfaction, leadership commitment and job satisfaction. All right, so I took a look at the 2020 OPM FBES archival data. And with that, I had 10,588 NASA employees that actually participated in the 2020 um, survey. All right, so let's take a look at NASA's telework environment. So a lot of the data show that a lot of um, NASA employees they had an increased morale. They really enjoyed working in their uh, telework program. Um, there was a lot of uh, individuals that felt like they had more job satisfaction um, because uh, NASA had more of a structured uh, approach to telework. Um, they were able to um, alter, alternate between the two. They had the increased productivity in terms of um, being able to uh, you know, have those office hours, um, you know, there was a culture created. Um, and what NASA showed that, um, like I said, the product productivity went up, the job performance, there was less absenteeism because people were able to do the things that they needed, whether it be, you know, take, take your child to the dentist. Um, you know, this day and age, a lot of us have, you know, elderly parents. So they were able to support their parents in scores with, you know, that care. Um, and then they also found that in recruitment, you have a larger talent pool that you're able to tap into. So they were able to retain employees, they were able to uh, support them in that way. And a lot of the NASA employees, they found that they not only enjoyed their working from home experience, but they received the support. They receive uh, professional development. They were satisfied with their job. They were value added members to their actual teams. So this is the feedback that we got. So 93% said that NASA and teleworkers agreed that their uh, leadership provided them employee development. 95% showed that NASA teleworkers were satisfied with their teleworker program, all right? Um, 89%, they agreed uh, that they had a real opportunity to, to improve their skills in their organization. So they were given that opportunity. 81% um, of teleworkers agreed that their managers promoted communication among the different work groups. Um, so that communication piece is definitely important. So overall, um, it was found that majority of the uh, individuals uh, a very large percentage showed that they had that support, the growth opportunities and so forth. So let's just take a quick look at Telework background. All right. So Telework was authorized uh, in 2010 uh, for all federal employees. All right. And so the goal of that was um, for different agencies to uh, develop those well-structured uh, uh, telework programs for their employees. And that, that was just all depending on their role, right? And then in 2020, when the you know pandemic 
happened, uh, you know, everything shut down um, because of COVID-19, this was definitely a great opportunity for the federal government um, and their agencies to implement those structures that they had set in place, right? Because during that time, you know, it was very uh, rush, rush for a lot of businesses that did not have that uh, telework uh, structure set in place. But for those that did, there were ro uh, remote work solutions. So as I mentioned, um, as far as, you know, with Microsoft Teams, um, Zoom, a lot of that, those, those were established well before COVID. Uh, 2013 for Zoom and 2017 uh, for Microsoft Teams. But with the pandemic, the usage of them skyrocketed, um, which allowed a lot of businesses to quickly transition over. Um, and there was an increase of almost 200% of those actually using Microsoft Teams, um, which may not have been necessary prior to the pandemic. However, with uh, Zoom, they had they showed an extreme amount of sales, uh, 10 million in December and then 300 million um, in April, all right? So the impact on businesses with the uh, structured telework, uh, there were definitely benefits uh, for their employees and their um, employer and for the employer. So those that were on site transitioning to uh, work at home, they were able to easily do that because they had that uh, structure set in place. So they were able to, you know, transition over to, um, you know, whatever those platforms may have been. And then also um, the uh, infrastructure, you know, ergonomics, that's a big thing, you know, making sure that you have that, um, your, your workplace set up. Um, when you don't have that workplace set up and or you don't have an employer that has a structured telework um, system, it would probably have been a rush rush for you um, in that particular situation because, you know, now you're trying to transition into a infrastructure that your uh, organization may not have developed out yet. So you may have had connectivity issues or communication challenges. Um, you know, maybe there was a help desk. You're organization may not have set that up. You know, maybe your organization, they're so used to working on the site that they didn't know how to help support the work-life balance um, in that. You had kids at home, right? There were distractions. Um, so being able to balance that between, you know, working from home and, you know, childcare, time management, that was a big one. You know, being able to, now that you're all in one space throughout the entire day, being able to manage your space in that, um, throughout that, uh, work day. And as an employer, I'm sure, you know, if you didn't have that well-structured telework and pro pro uh, program, you, there was probably a decrease in productivity and a, maybe a lack of career advancement and visibility of the work you've done. Um, again, that lack of maybe routine and structure of trying to do all the things. Um, so there are social um, and health implications of unstructured um, telework programs. So we're gonna take a quick look at that. Um, there can be, you know, psychological stress, uh, distress as far as with, you know, all the, uh, of not having the structure. Um, there might be a feeling of isolation because you're used to being in the telework environment, or excuse me, the uh, on-site environment. Now you don't have your colleagues. You know, I don't have a lunchbox anymore. Now I just have the refrigerator. So you know, being able to have that balance, um, you know, set, just sedimentary lifestyle, getting out of the house, you know, we're always connected to our devices. That can possibly lead to, you know, you know, depression, anxiety, just because of, you know, the situation as far as uh, being made possibly overwhelmed with, you know, all the expectations of not having that um, particular balance. This may bleed over into your, um, you know, personal life, have strained relationships, and so forth. All right, so there are tips for businesses and employees as you work in this uh, telework environment. Definitely communicate with your team. Or if you are experiencing, you know, issues, whether it be technology, you know, having visibility, let your manager know. You know, reach out to them for that support so that they can, you know, maybe provide you opportunities or tap into your, you know, different departments. Um, 
work-life balance is definitely important. Um, being able to step away from, you know, just to have a quick break, have lunch, have dinner. We feel like we're supposed to eat and be at the computer. Step away, you know what I mean? Define those lines. Take care of yourself. That is the most important thing I feel a part of this entire conversation. Being able to take time for yourself, whether it be workout, um, you know, get stay active, movement, find opportunities to just sit and you know relax. Um, stay active. Again, stay active with your connected with your colleagues. Do check-ins, you know, throw some on someone's calendar. Hey, I just want to see how you're doing today. You know, communicate effectively. Make sure that, you know, you're taking that time, not only for work, but then also for yourself with self-care. Get up and take stretch breaks. Um, get outside, right? It's easy when you're in a telework environment just to be inside all day. Get outside, take a walk around the block. You know, set those goals for yourself. Track those goals with your, um, your team, with your supervisor. And so that when you know you've met them, um, seek support when needed. Be able to reach out, create those lines of communications if they don't already exist, all right? We're gonna look at some of the statistics and what's been said about you know, working in a work-life balance. So Buffer State of uh, Remote uh, Work 2021 uh, report, workers, 22% of workers struggle with unplugging from work. 17 found it difficult to maintain that work-life balance. 70% of our, our remote workers report experience moderate, moderate to severe symptoms of depression during the pandemic. International Labor uh, Organization reported that global working hours declined 88% in 2020, equivalent to 250 million full-time jobs. Surveyed by Gardner, 88%. Organizations worldwide mandated or encouraged the workers uh, to work from home during the uh, pandemic. Let's look at some of the health, uh, you know, social impacts. Divorce before the pandemic, 45%. After pandemic, 55%. All right, here's some of the industries that are geared towards remote working. Software, 49%. Finance, 38%. Travel, 29%. Missed the last one. Um, emotional and uh, mental health uh, toll by age during the pandemic. Um, so U.S. labor force worked from home full-time for 42% uh, during the pandemic. This was a study by the Stanford uh, University. All right. So this is a study by the uh, Global Workplace Analytics. So estimate that uh, 11,000 save money um, for work from home, surveyed by Buffer. 20% uh, remote employees struggle with loneliness uh, during the pandemic. So we do know that there are a lot of benefits, right, from working from home. Increased flexibility, improved work-life balance, reduced uh, commuting, lower overhead for uh, costs for businesses, but there are the challenges that do um, exist. So we do have to embrace uh, the telework because it is definitely the future. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. James. Uh, this is amazing. I'm learning a lot of stuff from this already. And uh, in fact, uh, before I go to the next question, I need to reinforce what you just said, because uh, we can always find a way to make excuses for our own health. I mean, public health. So telework, I take is very, very seriously because most of the state workers uh, in public health are uh, currently teleworking. I'm talking about California. Uh, many other states are doing the same thing. Local health departments, uh, regional departments, they're teleworking. And uh, uh, one thing that stood out for me is that you keep reinforcing and reemphasizing going out in the environment. I, I, I truly believe that. Uh, for all my fellow teleworkers, please take some time to go outside and receive pho the photons. You need it. It activates your melanin. It activates your brain. It activates a lot of stuff in your body for self-healing. Uh, now, and if it's not... Uh, summertime or during uh, the sunny days, if it's winter, 
I still suggest go out there. <laughs> no more excuses. Wear your jacket, go out there, and you will connect with what we call visual cues. Uh, it will, they will use seeing the snow if it's where snows are falling you now, just connecting with the nature. There's a lot of scientific evidence that show that it's healthy for your body. Uh, now, unfortunately, we have unsafe environments where people live. You know, it's called social determinants of health, right? So a social environment. Now, if you're in an environment that you don't have that liberty to do so, find a neighborhood where it's safe, a park where it's safe. Do all the stuff. It's very, very important. So I can go on and on. And, you know, there's a lot of justification, especially if we don't want to do something as people, as humans, we will always find rational justification yeah. on why we don't want to do that. So uh, I just want to say that, but uh, moving forward for uh, the next question, rounds of questions. Uh, uh, you know, Dr. You know, just, just somebody, somebody is talking. Can you please mute your phone, please? If you're just joining, can you mute your phone or mic? Thank you so much. Okay, so for the next round of question, Dr. James, now that you have shared all this information, can you take us back to your research questions that you addressed in your research? Uh, describe your, the uh, theoretical framework you used for this study and methodology you used. Yeah, sure. So um, for my research questions, there were two questions that were posed in this study. And just to note that each one of these questions, um, the research questions were aligned with leadership's commitment, all right? So the first question, uh, what percentage of employees were satisfied in how, with, their, uh, with how their managers communicated between different work uh, units uh, during telework? Um, so, and let me actually go back here. So. As I mentioned, the first question was what percentage of employees were satisfied with how their employees, uh, excuse me, managers uh, communicated between different work units uh, during uh, the pandemic, uh, or excuse me, during telework. So uh, that was research question one. Now I looked at the federal uh, employees viewpoint uh, survey. And in that survey, I looked at job satisfaction as well as leadership support. So the two survey items that I looked at was managers, uh, managers promote um, communication among different work units. And you would have, to, uh, the, and you'll see it a little bit later, um, they weighed in on that survey question, um, right? So the second question was, how satisfied are you with the telework program in your agencies? Um, so that those two questions align with research question uh, number one. For research question number two, for my study, the question was, uh, what percentage of employees were provided opportunities from their supervisor to improve their work skills for professional development? So in the Federal um, Employees Viewpoint Survey, I looked at two survey items. Uh, my supervisor in my work unit supports my employee development. The other survey uh, item that I looked at was, I am given a real opportunity to improve my skills in my organization, all right? So just to take a look at um, the theoretical framework um, that was implemented um, in my uh, particular study. So I did use Hertzberg's uh, motivation hygiene uh, theory, which describes the percentages from the par uh, part participants in the leadership, uh, leadership commitment, telework satisfaction, professional development, and in their, uh, their uh, telework environment. All right, so with Hertzberg's, it theorizes two constructs. It has the hygiene theory, or excuse me, the hygiene factors and the uh, motivators, right? So the hygiene factors or dissatisfiers are job security, compensation, uh, you know, just the working overall conditions, the quality of your leadership, uh, the relationships that you have maybe with colleagues or supervisors. Um, and then the motivators are, you know, your responsibilities, your job satisfaction, do you receive recognition, 
Um, you know, are there achievements? Does your, you know, do you have that program set up where, you know, when you achieve certain items or certain things or tasks, your, your organization recognizes that. Um, they promote that growth, not only for their, you know, business, but for yourself, your, your personal and your professional growth. Um, they're, you know, trying to provide that advancement within your career. Um, so those are the two uh, uh, that I looked at as far as with the Hertzberg theory. Um, and for the hygiene factors, as I mentioned, I looked at leadership's commitment um, that was considered as a hygiene factor. I looked at telework satisfaction. That was more so of a motivator. Um, communicate, excuse me, uh, leadership, as I mentioned, leadership's commitment. It is a hygiene of uh, employee development. Those are motivators. Um, you know, your skills, being able to advance those, those are definitely motivators. Right. So um, the research method um, that I looked at or used was quantitative research using archive data from uh, FEBS. So participants, um, they responded to the survey and I uh, that was collected by OPM. And the survey items that I uh, looked at were only in those particular areas, leadership's commitment, telework satisfaction, and professional development. And the questions were on a Likert type scale. Um, so they were able to, you know, just kind of how you did in the poll that was taken at the beginning. They were, you know, either very satisfied on the scale all the way down to uh, very dissatisfied. So they were able to weigh in, you know, how they felt about their telework program um, based on that survey. So the design of the research, um, a research design was a descriptive uh, design. It described just the basic features, um, uh, giving, uh, you know, bar charts, um, uh, pie graphs, and so forth. So a lot of uh, the research design, um, basically, it gave an overview of a snapshot into, you know, NASA's uh, telework program. Um, and it, you know, of course, able to uh, view that in more of a clearer picture, the statistics that were pulled from that, so that I could understand the telework landscape, landscape of uh, NASA. So this definitely uh, gives more uh, an insight into their telework program uh, to help understand, um, you know, what that looked like. Um, definitely further investigation to, to help inform maybe policies and recommendations can take place just by looking at, you know, those uh, statistics. Okay. So as in terms of the population, I only looked at um, NASA's uh, telework population. The total number, um, 10,588. Um, and I only looked at the 2020 um, uh, Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey. So I only looked at that one uh, year of data, all right? And so once um, that was done, I, you know, I met, I used all uh, the different surveys that actually met that inclusion uh, criteria. All right, so this was a secondary source. Um, as I mentioned, I use OPM. They have a survey that has take, uh, dated back to 2010 as far as with finding out how their um, employees enjoy, you know, the telework programs um, and so forth. Um, so this was, you know, raw data, you know, available to the public. Um, so there was two phases to that, just to ensure that I received consent from OPM to use uh, their data in my survey. So I reached out to them and then also uh, reached out to NASA to ensure that, you know, I could use their name in my actual research. So in the data analysis phase, I did use SPSS um, 28. Um, and with that, um, the, like I mentioned, the three areas that I looked at um, were uh, telework satisfaction, professional development, and uh, leadership's commitment within that. Based on those uh, two work research questions, um, I looked at the percentages of how uh, NASA employees responded to those uh, particular questions um, based on those uh, variables. 
And Dr. James, uh, before you continue, sir, uh, I just want to make sure that our audience uh, follow also as well. Uh, the OPM uh, is actually, for those of you that are not familiar with it, is uh, the United States Office of uh, Personnel Management. They've been doing this federal service for years. You know, they've been collecting a lot of information from federal employees to also make sure that they understand the barriers and successes and also how to improve federal employee work environment. Um, so I just want to put, out, uh, put that out there for those of you that are not familiar with that uh, organizational uh, survey. Uh, so moving forward, Dr. James, uh, now that you describe the, your research question, the theoretical framework, the methodology you have applied for this study, um, it will be a nice time to actually uh, describe more of the findings of your study uh, and also describe the social implications of your study. Uh, what are the lessons learned and also the practical application of your findings not only in public health, but also in all professional environment. Uh, we know that telework will not be, may not for this moment in our present time, or uh, in maybe near future apply to some work, especially, you know, surgery and all this other stuff, but it may later on down the road in way future. But uh, can you just, uh, uh, you know, Describe those findings and let us know what you found and your recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. So, so for the first uh, survey question in my research question one, uh, the first, this was the results that were actually um, pulled from this particular, this one question. So uh, manager, uh, my manager promotes uh, communication among different work groups. So as you can see um, from that Likert scale between strongly disagree all the way to strongly agree. So it, uh, the frequency is how many individuals actually responded back, the percentage. And then, um, so what I'm looking at right now, based on that, uh, what was it? 44% agreed. Um, uh, for strongly agreed, 36.8 strongly agree that their manager actually promoted um, communication among different work groups. So that means, you know, if you're working in the training department, you know, they're encouraging you to work out, uh, reach out to maybe your change management team or your HR team, or, you know, just that collaboration, whatever that looks like in your organization, they, they were uh, supportive of that. Um, just looking at the strongly disagree, you know, 188 said, you know what? No, not at all. You know, my manager does not support that communication. Um, so based on these results, um, I just wanted to highlight those, uh, the agree and the strongly agree. And so, uh, you know, just kind of to focus on the communication between the manager and the employee, if uh, the results did find that 81% of the employees agreed that, you know, they were provided that support um, not only within their internal groups, but then also outside of that. All right, so then again, to look at the um, next survey question uh, for RQ1, how satisfied are you with the telework program in your agency? Um, so just to highlight, um, again, that very satisfied, that very, excuse me, uh, satisfied, um, you know, uh, responses, 27.5% uh, said that they uh, were satisfied um, with their telework program, and this is again within NASA, and then 67.3% uh, said that they were very satisfied uh, with their tele uh, telework program. All right, so um, this particular um, uh, research question did um, focus on employee telework satisfaction in the telework environment, and it was found that 94.8% uh, of uh, NASA employees, they were satisfied with their telework uh, program. All right. 
So for RQ2, um, this was a question is for it more aligned with uh, professional development. So the previous one, it was communication. Um, this one is more so in job satisfaction, and but this one is more so aligned with um, you know, that professional development, employee development, and so forth, and leadership support within that. Okay, so the survey question um, that was posed to NASA employees was uh, supervisors in my work unit support employee development. So just to highlight the agree and they strongly agree, 29.6% said, um, you know, I, I agree with that. Um, 63.8%, they strongly agreed that their supervisor uh, supported their uh, development, All right? And just to take note at the percentages of the strongly disagree and, you know, very small percentages, 0 0.9, 1.5, you know, 4.3, those were very small percentages felt like they weren't supported um, in that um, employee growth uh, opportunities. All right, so, um, Again, this is focusing on leadership commitment and employee development. And out of that, um, the findings show that 93.4 um, either agreed or strongly agreed that um, their supervisors supported them in their uh, development. All right, so the next survey question for RQ2, uh, I'm given a real opportunity to improve my skills in my organization. Again, to highlight agree and strongly agree, 39.3% said they agree. Um, and then 49.4% said that they strongly agree that they're given the opportunity to improve their skills in their organization. All right, so um, just looking at uh, the results, um, I'm uh, from that last survey item, it revealed that 88.7% um, of the employees agreed or strongly agreed that we're, they were giving that support, um, which is definitely a high percent. All right. So just looking at um, the lessons learned um, for, um, you know, just uh, overall uh, structure of NASA's telework program, um, it's, it's uh, like I said, looking at the data and uh, trying to get an understanding of the organization's landscape. You know, how are your uh, employees feeling about that particular, or your particular um, telework uh, program? So in NASA, there are definitely a lot of successes that have um, taken place. I'm sure, you know, even with the pandemic, they were able, they had lessons learned that came out of that that helped strengthen their telework network. Um, so it was found that they have an established um, and effective communication. Um, they have a reliable and secure uh, technology infrastructure. They set boundaries. You know, when I'm on lunch break, I am not, I'm on lunch break. You know, they have, you know, that open door policy to be able to say, you know, reach out to me as your manager, you know, if you have questions. They have opportunities, you know, maybe to dial into different sessions to, you know, uh, to navigate the telework environment. Um, and a lot of this helps not only uh, with employee burnout, but also just, you know, your well-being. You know, it, a lot of times it's uh, hard for organizations or ourselves to be able to say, you know what, let me be able to take time for myself as the employee. Um, you know, taking, like I say, those breaks. It doesn't have to be necessarily a lunch break or maybe like, um, you know, a 15 minute, just walk around the block. Um, so they, it was found that their uh, telework program it, um, encouraged this, um, you know, being able to, you know, um, have uh, that transparency with uh, performance evaluation criteria, um, establishing that. Um, I think that's important for, you know, employees to be able to understand, you know, at what metric, what, how am I being evaluated? Um, what are the criteria for that? Um, even offering trainings, you know, to um, support with time management, operating in those different platforms, uh, motivation, self-motivation, uh, you know, in telework arrangement, um, having that flexibility and adaptability. You know, some, some people may say, you know, I have a doctor's appointment. I don't want to call off, you know, having an employer that says, you know, please take that time for yourself 
And, you know, the work can't get done if you're not well, you know what I mean? So it's good to have those, uh, almost those times, like for instance, in my organization, they, you know, they block off a certain time on Friday, no meetings, you know what I mean? Um, on Fridays, no, you're not, you're not even allowed to, you can if you like, but no video, you know what I mean? Giving that techno stress that comes along with, you know, always having to be on camera and always having to um, maybe, you know, be so rigid in the, uh, just having that flexibility was definitely important. So um, this was, uh, again, NASA's successes. Um, just to take a look at this actual study um, that I conducted, um, uh, th there were limitations in that particular study. So NASA employees that, um, who were uh, telework um, and completed the 2020 uh, FEBS uh, survey. So if they did not telework, if they were on site or they had maybe had a hybrid um, that those ind uh, individuals weren't actually uh, included in this study. So those were, that was a limitation. Um, descriptive statistics, um, only analyzing the data. Um, Qualitative and subjective perceptions uh, were not explored in this particular uh, study. And then um, gender, um, you know, understanding, you know, how many males actually enjoy working from home, how many females maybe um, enjoyed or maybe did not enjoy it um, across the different groups. So um, those were the limitations of this particular study. All right. So there are instances where NASA employees don't have the opportunity to, ex or the employer doesn't have an opportunity to extend telework um, in certain capacities. Within NASA, there are mission critical operations that have to maybe take place on base or on site, um, be, whether it be, cut, be because um, it may be matters of security, you know, national uh, security or um, just being able to, you know, collaborate with different um, individuals, um, and that may be a requirement for some of their uh, projects that won't uh, lend themselves to telework. Uh, maybe a technical infrastructure um, is another one, uh, possibly, you know, the software. Um, there are situations where there are complex systems, and it may require the uh, individual to actually be in a secured, compartmentalized um, infrastructure. Um, and they can't do that from home. So that um, is definitely a limitation. Um, collaboration and teamwork. Uh, NASA and projects often collaborate among uh, te uh, teams such as scientists and engineers and researchers. Um, so that could possibly be, you know, a limitation as well. Uh, security and data protection. Um, working in the at-home environment, there are situations where there you might be dealing with classified material and working from home may present that as a potential risk. Um, so those were a few uh, limitations and challenges um, in this uh, for actually NASA teleworkers. All right, so more of the practical approach, um, you know, just looking at telework and, you know, just some of the different uh, functions uh, within that. Uh, so many, uh, Administrative tasks and responsibilities can be conducted with without the physical presence of actually being in the office. So, you know, just looking at the different uh, jobs and roles and responsibilities, telework could be more applicable to those that are working in departments such as maybe um, IT, you know, the help desk that can be that can operate more from a remote, you know, supporting with the troubleshooting and you know installation being able to remote into individuals' computers and support with, um, with that. Maybe you're having issues, um, you, know, uh, you know, as far as with, you know, downloading or whatnot. So IT can support that from a remote, remote capacity. Um, there are instances, again, where you might be a project manager and those particular roles um, can be, uh, lend themselves better to a remote environment opposed to, you know, scientists and, you know, our engineers and so forth, where they, where they may have to be on site. All right, so training, maybe your training department or, you know, uh, your professional development department, those are other opportunities that um, will lend themselves to telework um, environments. 
call centers, uh, customer service, uh, legal and compliance. Um, so those are opportunities for telework as well. Thank you, Dr. James, for this amazing study that you have uh, conducted and the findings. Uh, I will open it up to open discussion. But before I do that, I just put a public website uh, in the chat. Please visit us at public, P-U-B-H-O-L-I-C dot O-R-G. Uh, you can also visit our YouTube channel, which is Popholic Show and Podcast at YouTube, at YouTube, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is the only way we do this, so you can support us in the work we do. Uh, now I'll open it up to open discussion, whereby any of you guys are, are welcome to pose questions uh, to just Dr. James uh, to explain certain things that you may have concern or something that you have questions about. So uh, that being said, uh, you are welcome to ask questions. And you can ask questions either by dropping them in the chat or by um, actually, you know, speaking. You don't necessarily have to come on camera, um, but you can pose a question um, either way. That is correct. Yes, uh, Dr. James. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining. Yes, Dr. James. It's uh, um, Coach William, Coach William Power up in Canada here. And I uh, loved, uh, loved what I've heard so far. It, it, I'd love to hear more next time you have an, another study on the same subject. It would be uh, very, very loving to, to listen to it, to some of the things that you felt were limited. And having said that, uh, is what I do for, for a living, uh, the, the mental aspects of life um, – mental illness is something that people shy away from telling the truth, telling themselves the truth when they look in the mirror. Um, and it's, it's, it's undetectable. People, people are very good with poker faces. Someone really has to know someone to know whether they are depressed, whether they are having problems. And the reason for bringing this up is it would be a, a subject or what may be a way of of including in the next survey is, is a way of uncovering this uh you know so that people can answer the questions because if you were, at, were to ask a direct question do you feel like you you're depressed well most people are going to say no they're not going to be honest i would say i would think but if you were to ask questions indirect that could add up to that such as have you gained weight have you lost weight? Are you afraid to to you know to to go to work again? Do you like hiding behind the fact that you're not going to the office? Questions that can lead up to the fact is someone really happy? Is they are they really moving forward personal with personal development and their own well being, which you which you've mentioned? And I guess another question is is how does the employer um, how do they how do they go about what criteria criteria are they using uh, under the, under this new environment of tele telework to to actually know this is working for their employees or not not just on performance not just on numbers but overall assessment on how how do you uh, how do they go about advancing someone giving them promotions. Etc. How? What criteria are they using aside from what they are not seeing because they're not in the office anymore? I know there's a few questions there, but <laughs> uh, yeah, Dr. James, but but any feedback on all of that in a nutshell or in a few minutes? Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. And I think those are all great questions that, um, you know, a well-structured telework program um, mm -hmm. should definitely, you know, between checking in on your employees to figure out, you know, what, what they're, you know, it, it could be, you, you named a few things, you know, that led up to maybe depression or being un dissatisfied, you know, understanding, you know, their well-being, I think is a very important aspect of not only teleworkers, but also those that are actually in the actual work environment on site. Um, so I think having those check-ins to say, you know, not always look uh, working on the work, but, you know, checking in to say, how are you doing? You know, how, you know, just having, and a lot of us may call it, you know, small talk or whatever the case may be, but being able to check in on your employees, not about the work, but then also about themselves, I think is paramount as a, um, as a supervisor or, you know, that leads a team in a telework environment. Um, and then also, you know, setting up those structures in place in your organization um, that lends themselves to, you know, maybe a reward system or a, you know, being able to, uh, like for instance, in my organization, whenever you want to, you know, call someone out for doing something well, you know, being able to highlight um, so that they do have that visibility. Because a lot of times we can find, you know, we've done this great, you know, thing or completed this amazing task, but no one saw it. Um, so being able to have visibility and feeling like a value added member in your team, I think is very important. Um, so setting up those structures where if I have, uh, you know, maybe a direct report, or one of my employees did extremely well on something, and maybe I only knew they do, did it. I think it's setting up that positive phrase, you know, shouting them out, you know, using not only uh, maybe email and so forth, but, you know, maybe sending a blast to the team, you know, shout out to such and such. Um, even ha having, like I said, there's, uh, there's programs that are set up that will allow in, uh, employers to, um, you know, give feedback. You know, I just worked on such and such with a pro project and they did an amazing job. I want to, you know, give them that shout out. Um, so, you know, give them that award, you know, I think that's very important because, you know, um, like, like I said, on both hands, it's good to notice the work, but then it's also just important, just as important to notice the employee and checking on them as well. So I think there's, you know, a few different things that uh, could be set up in, you know, these telework programs to make them successful, not only for the business, but for the employee, um, you know, just telework practices as far as, you know, making it quiet days or quiet hours where, you know, employees are able, you know, in the telework environment, you can bounce meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting. I don't know how we did it when we were on site, but I feel like we found more opportunity to jam pack our calendars with the meetings um, and not having almost that transition time to say, okay, I just sat in a meeting for an hour. I actually haven't done, you know, the work, right? So giving employees that quiet time, that virtual closed door so that they have periods of time where they are able to focus on, you know, completing maybe those tasks, maybe able to, you know, take time for themselves. Um, be able to have that healthy balance between work and, you know, um, uh, that time management, you know, just being able to bring all that in together, I think is definitely important um, as far as, you know, telework practices, just setting up that infrastructure. So hopefully I answered your question. I know there were a few in there. Um, and Dr. Lumalu, I know um, you probably have some uh, feedback as well, but I definitely think it's important again, for um, as a supervisor to understand possibly, you know, what my employees are being faced with. Um, do they have children? Do they have elderly? You know, just understanding that and providing flexibility within that, I think is definitely important. So, you know, this is- uh, that's, that's, 
Thank you, Dr. Uh, James. This is a very great question from uh, Williams from Canada. Um, you know, mental health, I was in a, a room with a lot of uh, medical doctors years ago and they were talking about mental health. And one of the questions I asked them, I said, you know what? I think mental health is underdiagnosed, super underdiagnosed. And they look at me and like, they shake their head and say, yeah. You know, if, if we diagnose mental health issues, uh, like we do with blood pressure, with cholesterol, with A1C, diabetes, a lot of us have been traumatized. We all have a type of mental health issues. You know, there's a scale though of mental health trauma, right? So, and this question uh, is very important in a way that can tell our work be a mitigating coping mechanism to help a lot of us that have mental health problems, you know, some in lower scale, some in higher scale, there's no judgment yet. The issue that William brought up is that mental health has been so much stigmatized. You can't even mention it. Maybe, you know, it will be negative minor or something in your employment because like, you know, people will stigmatize you, discriminate against you. There's so plethora of negative things that you can, you know, that can be implicitly done within the environment where it becomes known, right? So I think we also as a society need to start being open that mental health is trauma. Last week, last few, uh, last month, I talked about infant mortality and I talk about the epigenetics of trauma can be inherited. In this case, mental health trauma also can be inherited. It's all biological. So this is a very good question. So the question will be, we're going to find out in a few more years using telework and having it implementing a professional environment, can it? I don't believe in medication for every issue. I don't think it's the best way to go. I think there's so much in the environmental cues that can heal us. There's so much in the environment that can heal us. And one of these is what Dr. James talks about, make our time to go out, exercise, you know, physically active. If it's not even going to the gym, but physical activity is important. It helps your mental mental uh, cues. It helps you your visual cues. There are so many things. So I think uh, uh, you know because of the fact that most medical practitioners use a PHQ nine and other subjective tool to measure mental health. It is so subjective. You know, and hopefully in the future, there might be a quantitative approach to assess for mental health uh, or marker or something like that, so that we can actually begin to diagnose this in medical field and people will be able to address their issues appropriately, either using medication or using a type of uh, environmental care or something like that. But there are so many cures. Uh, uh, like I said, I don't believe in everything. Just take a pill. I don't think that's uh, the best way to heal because then you have to deal with all the side effects that deals with the pills. But anyway, I'm not a medical pr uh, uh, provider and I'm not giving any medical suggestion here or recommendation, but this is uh, an opinion from me. But uh, So I'll leave it out and see if there's any other question out here that we can address. Yeah. Yes, I actually have a question as well. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this. This has been very inspiring and incredible to hear today. But I do have a question, more of an advice, I guess I should say, is I actually come from a, I first, you know, started with a larger corporation that I worked for. So it was on site every single day during COVID and everything. They did not care. They said, wear a mask and that's it. Come on into the office. So I actually changed my career and I'm working now for a smaller organization. There's only a few of us actually. And what drew me to the role was not only just because of my background and what I was interested in, but also because it was a 100% work from home environment. But lately, we've actually had a couple of conversations that 
we then said, okay, let's go hybrid, which is fine. It was two days a week. Now they're taking it a step further and saying, hey, why don't we come in every day? So it kind of takes me back to the original larger corporation I was part of, which is what I left. So do you think, or more so I should say, do you recommend any advice for me? Should I reach out to my employer and let her know personally how I feel that I feel like I would prefer the hybrid environment still, or do it just kind of go along with it? What is your, you know, output on that? Any advice you could provide me with? So I definitely say, you know, first and foremost, it is always important to communicate with your supervisor. Um, a lot of times they may, uh, you know, make a lot of these, uh, you know, updates or, you know, policies, procedures, and, um, that may be informed maybe by the business that they're working in, but I would say communicate, you know, advocate for yourself as to how you feel about that. Because I'm sure if you feel like that, then it's possible that, you know, there are other, other individuals on your team that possibly have the same sentiment. So I think the first step in that, you know, is to, um, especially um, you said you went from a larger corporation to a smaller corporation. Yeah. A lot of times it's harder to make those changes in larger uh, corporations, but being that you're with the, working with maybe a smaller one, I would say they are probably have more of an ear to hear from their employees and have that capacity to make those changes. Um, so I definitely say communicate um, how you feel about it and, you know, start those communications so that they understand not only possibly how you feel, but then others as well. So and collectively, possibly that could create a change. I think I, I, I actually agree with Dr. Deborah. I always agree with her opinion on this because she's an expert. I think uh, I agree. Most of the problem we have in a work environment is because people are afraid to say anything when things are going wrong or when uh, they feel certain way. I think we need to start creating a work environment where people are free to speak professionally and respectfully, you know, share the opinion. Because if you treat your uh, team, and I, I don't like the word staff, but uh, uh, because it seems like somebody owns you or something like that. But uh, if we treat each other as a team and you know that your team has something valuable in an organization, then you should be able to listen to how they feel about certain things. Sometimes, you know, there's feelings that will be irrational. Uh, sometimes there are feelings that will be irrational because you, we have to look at a, a business uh, a point of view. They, they have to make money. So, but if the organization is transparent to come in and put a PowerPoint and say, hey, you know, since you guys have been working in telework environment, this is the productivity, this is the outcome. This is the outcome when you guys are in, right? Like, that's why I made that first statement about uh, Marcus Aurelius, which said, in any impediment, uh, it advances action, right? So there's always a solution to problems. Uh, I guess the only problem I don't think that we have solution is the uh, uh, death which is everybody will experience, but like any other things that we deal with, there's always a solution. Sometimes we don't like the solutions because we have a mindset in certain things. So I agree that that communication, you know, is important, you know, discussing it with your management or your supervisor and say, hey, you know, uh, this is my productivity during a telework pro uh, program. It didn't change, you know, I'm still doing the same work. I'm still being effective. You know, why do you guys feel the need for us to come back? And that discussion should, uh, should be had so that everybody can understand the rationale while this uh, is happening. And if that's the direction they would want to go, sometimes you don't have any option, right? Because they employed you and they pay for your salary. But at least communication is important. And I think once those communications are uh, have taken place, I'm uh, again, I'm sure that you and your uh, supervisor can possibly come with a win-win, uh, you know, solution. It could be that she wants you on site just to have, you know, maybe those team interactions. There's ways to do that, um, you know, virtually. 
or, you know, they may want you to come on site because, you know, maybe to meet with the client or I think once those conversations take place, there's the opportunity to probably find some type of middle ground to meet both needs of not only the employer and possibly the clients, but also uh, the employees. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. If there's a question in the chat, I don't see any question in the chat. Is there any, any other person has any question or comment or concerns? Uh, you can put it in the chat or you can, you know, ask it. And I think also as you are putting your questions in the chat or possibly um, coming off mute, um, I think it's also important to have, uh, you know, surveys. I think surveys are definitely important because that information um, that, you know, can be collected from them. As the employer, I think it's good to, you know, figure out how your staff are doing, uh, your employees, how they're doing um, in their work from home environment. You know, the survey that we saw was, you know, developed by the Office of Personnel Management. But, you know, also, I think it's important that other organizations outside of the federal uh, agencies should also um, implement those surveys to check in on how they're doing, how structured are their telework programs, and are they being, you know, of support to those individuals that are participating in those, um, in those, in that program. Yeah, you know, and I think that knowledge is power. And, you know, again, thank you so much for this. I would love to share this actually with my employer and my other um, teammates on my team, if that's all right, you could share this. Yeah, definitely. We would, uh, I know, uh, Dr. Lumulu, you are, um, you know, dispersing this um, through Pubholic, so. Right, this slide will be in Pubholic.org. I already put the, um, what is it called, the link in the, chat and also put the link in the uh, for our YouTube channel. So this video will be posted in YouTube channel in two days. It will be in YouTube channel, if not tomorrow. So, and uh, you can go and uh, search for us on YouTube, Popholic Show and Podcast, and you can subscribe to our channel and then you can get the video there and you can use that video and share with your uh, colleagues, uh, friends, uh, uh, well wishers, wherever they are. Uh, thank you guys so much. If there's no other questions, I will close this show for the sake of time. I know we still have like uh, 10 more minutes, but if there, I'll give last chance for everybody to ask a question. Otherwise, I'll close the show. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. James, for your second visit in Popholic. Uh, you know, for my fellow teleworkers, please, again, like I said before, go out there, receive your photon. It's a free gift to everyone from the nature. You need it for your mental health cues, your visual cues, your melanin, your metabolism. You need it for a lot of stuff. Be physically active, uh, you know, uh, for an environment that's not safe, please, you know, uh, exercise your um, will very well to go out there in the park, connect with the nature. If you're teleworking, uh, be safe everywhere you go. Uh, you know, let's not justify a sedentary behavior all the time. There's so much plethora of benefit from teleworking. Yes, definitely. We cannot be naive. There's a lot of challenges with uh, uh, telework, which we include, you know, in the future, we don't know maybe obesity rate, we, we, we increase due to people being sedentary, high blood pressure, we include, increase cholesterol level because now people will have access to their refrigerator all the time and binge, binge eating all the time while working from home, but all this take discipline. So that being said, Popholic is about healthy discussion. It's about healthy people and healthy community. And uh, nothing more, this is how simple we are. It is about you. That's why we do this show. And please 
thank you again for uh, participating in this uh, telework uh, and leadership commitment podcast. And uh, in next month, we'll be having other discussions in public health. And finally, thank you, Je Dr. James, for visiting us again. And thank we you. are humbly appreciative of all the work you have done. And by the way, Dr. James has launched her own organization also called Fortitude for Hope. So I'll be uh, looking forward to working with your organization soon. Thank you so much. And everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one all.